Carl and Lou here from Games, Brains and Headbanging Life, GBHBell.com for sure. And it's the nasties as we are going to the 1979 independent supernatural horror film, Don't Go Near the Park. Directed by Lawrence D. Fold and starring Aldo Ray, Mino Palouse, Tamara Taylor, Robert Gribbin, Barbara Bain and Linnea Quigley. Mm -hmm. Which I did get very excited about when I saw. And then, mm -hmm. it's always pointless, pointless. anyway. Yeah, yeah, pointless really. Starring as loose. Mm -hmm. It's a loose term here. Its plot follows a brother and sister, both cursed in prehistoric times, to remain on Earth and must sub 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 survive, excuse me, survive on the entrails of young people because of that curse. Yeah, of course. And in an attempt to break the curse and achieve immortality, the brother must conceive a child as a virginal sacrifice. And that is the plot. It is weird. It's weird as hell. It is a weird plot in a movie that I'm going to be honest with you, is pretty fucking shit. Yeah. There's not even like sort of fun to back up the weirdness mm -hmm. it's just fucking bizarre crap acting crap yeah, effects oh. crap makeup a story that's just a bit too nonsensical yeah and like we say that very we don't say that lightly considering what we've watched yeah it's like we can you can kind of suspend belief and go yeah i'm on board with this like all this kind of stuff but this was just like no 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 awful. no it, it 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 doesn't even make a lot of sense no yeah because when after you watch it going what? what? <laughs> what? Yeah. What was the point? Like, what was the goal here? And how? It sounds simple. Okay, they're cursed, and to keep themselves young, they're something like uh, for every year that age ten, yeah. Yeah. Um, which makes no sense as well later on because you see someone like a year doesn't pass yet she seems to be aging constantly or going back and forth and stuff yeah. like that. Yeah. Uh, it was filmed in L.A., which makes sense when you see the yeah. kind of location. But it was uh, Folds. Um, Lawrence D. Folds, director will debut at the age of 19. Wow. Wow, indeed. Okay. Sorry, dude. Bad start. <laughs> yeah. Released theatrically September 1981. Gained notoriety when it was successfully prosecuted for obscenity in the UK and placed on the nasties list due to its violent mm. content. I get it to a degree. Yeah. I actually think its themes are probably more problematic than anything else because the violence yeah. is par for the course in the nasties. Yeah. But it does deal with um, underage... Sex, yes. uh, it deals yeah. with, uh, particularly when it comes to a potential rape scene, but it also deals with, um, what do they call it when a father wants to bang his daughter? Incest. Incest, thank you. Yeah. yeah, incest aspects as well. In many years after that, it's been released in the home video market under several different titles. Night Stalker and Curse of the Living Dead. However, I've never seen it marketed no. under those titles. So, yeah. But don't go near the park. Is it's it just as bad? It's the with the titles because it's like, no, it's got it's got no, it's got no links to the it's, any part of there is well one's part of it, but I'm it implies not, this ranch is yeah. in a park and it's just abandoned and left alone, which is a bit like what what yeah, yeah. what mm -hmm. it's just one of those I think trying to cash in in the don't part of things rather yes. than anything yeah. else. Obviously, critical response was more largely negative, and its themes of cannibalism, incest, and paedophilia, which we've just touched upon, oh, yeah. is troublesome. In 2006, Dark Sky Films released a DVD edition featuring the original US theatrical cut. Mm. So, this film starts off poorly. Mm. As we start in prehistoric times, no, we know this because we're in a cave and they're wearing like crap prehistoric oh, rags, costumes. Yeah, like, costumes. Cheap, like cheap Amazon. Um, yeah, you know the kind of thing like yeah, Halloween costume, that yeah. where it's like the caveman outfit really and stuff like that. Material. And for yeah. some reason, outside... It's like an earthquake is happening. Yeah. But inside the cave, nothing is happening. It makes no sense. Uh, pre pre pe Petronella. Pre Petronella. Pe Petronella. Yes. Curses Tra and Gar. <laughs> I mean, what are you supposed to do here? Yeah, there we go. They're siblings who are forced to live their lives preying on young people to bound and trust to retain you. So basically, here's the curse. And I think it's because they killed... Um, and one of their other siblings, I think it's something like that. Yeah. It's not very clear because what they've done is this: this older, the mother mm. is really, really old with really old makeup, and she's going, "I will kiss you," mm -hmm. like that kind of voice, yeah. um, which isn't great. So the nature of the curse allows it to be lifted after twelve thousand years, so a full cycle of the zodiac, apparently. Well, okay. We're after which, one of the siblings must conceive a child. And that child must then be sacrificed and they will become immortal after that. Yeah. And then we jump millennia later to 1965 where we start by seeing the siblings uh, with horrible makeup to make um. them look old, <laughs> kill some random woman in yeah. the 
park. Yep. In a park. Don't go near it. Don't go near this park. It's hilarious because he rips up on a shirt and he's got to dig into her stomach. Oh, yeah. So what they've done is crack prosthetic. But what they've done, they've given her no boobs. Yeah. So her chest is just completely flat well, with you, no nipples. You could have like left the top half on and undone the buttons from Which they would there. do later on. Yeah. Which they would do later on anyway. Mm. But it's the fact that you're like, well, okay, just a woman without uh, any boobs, right? Yeah. Except there's no nipples. No nipples. There's nothing. It's, it's just like, like chesting. She's so got no chest. It's just there's not a great no. start. So 12,000 years have now passed. So Gra, Gar, should I say? Not Gra, Gar. Gar, Gar Steve. Gar Steve plans to conceive a child. He uses the name Mark and rents a room in a home of a beautiful young woman. And that is Linnea Quigley. Yeah. And it's just like, it's so stupid because like he's super fucking creepy. Mm-hmm. She's got a, like room for rent outside. He walks into her house. She's in the shower. He walks into the bathroom. Yeah. And she's like, what the hell are you doing? And he's like, oh, sorry, I saw this. And then she's like, oh, it's okay. Come and live, come and live, come and live with me. My reference is, I'm a young, young female. You walked into my shower mm. and you didn't lock your door. But we're not getting into that. But yeah, just all a bit free, a bit quick. It's so stupid, <laughs> particularly as he acts weird, he's rude to her. Mm. It's just really, really oh, odd. Oh. But um, that night she sneaks into his room, starts to look at something, he catches her, and then he seems to hypnotise her. Mm. And it's Leia Quigley, so obviously. Boobs. Yeah. Um, they end up, he ends up marrying her, we then jump sometime in the future, yeah. and they get married, and then he can see the child called Bondi. Bondi. They called the child Bondi. So we got, what we got? Who we got? We got Gar. <laughs> Tra uh-huh. and Bondi. And then got <coughs> Mark. Yes. <laughs> but over the years, because we just jumped through time, yeah. as uh, Bondi grows up, Mark's more obsessed with her to the point where his marriage disintegrates, yeah. um, eventually leaving to, what's call it, um, her leaving. Mm. Yeah. Uh, on her 16th, on Bondi's 16th birthday, she kicks off, her mother kicks off about oh, to yeah. Mark, about him lo- being like, oh, like... You love her more than me. Yeah, in front of her own door and everything. It's pretty, pretty awkward. And this is where Mark gives her an ancient amulet as well. And that's when um, that's that's when Linnea Quigley exits the film. Yeah, bye. Bye, never to be seen again. I'm really, really upset about these events. Uh, Bondi end up runs away. I don't know why she runs away from her father. No. You know, who cares who mother mother left? Yeah. Who cares? You know, your father's still and he's the one you love. And she ends up hitching a ride with three male hippies. And you can already see what's going to happen. Oh, yeah. Um, as they attempt to gang rape her in the back of the van. It's a nasty, what do you expect? Yeah. But crying out for help from her father and grabbing the amulet, am- amulet, something seems to happen as it begins to glow. And a van begins to drive out of control, crashing off a bridge before bursting into flames. Somehow, Bondi's out of the van and yeah. fine. She's fine. Just yeah. fine. High, high speed van, she's out. Yep. Protected by the amulet. It's, yeah, there's, uh, I mean, we don't see it, we don't, she's just not in the van. Yeah. And I'm saying that's fine. Yeah. Presumably it's magic, right? She ends up wandering around for a bit, finding an abandoned house near the park where Tra has been staying and uh, withering because of her lack of sustenance. She resides in seclusion. Yeah. Don't get this. I don't get this. Why yeah. hasn't she been... Why has she not worked on... We see later she will do that. Yeah. But, like, it makes no sense. She wears, like, this weird mask to hide her looks. Yeah. But then later she goes back to being young. And it's like, why did you do that before? Oh, like, a year, and te- age and ten years... In a year sucks, but you've still got a whole year, right? Yeah. But it never seems to really no, fully explain that. Too much to think about in that, isn't it? Anyway, Tra calls herself Patty, and uh, obviously Bondi doesn't know a clue that she's her aunt technically. But Tra immediately realizes who Bondi is thanks to the amulet. There, Bondi ends up meeting Nick, who's an eight-year-old boy, a cheeky little fucker, probably best actor in the. Thing. Yeah. He's pretty good. Yeah, he's quite sort of, what's the word, precocious. Yeah. yeah. Like, you, I get the whole, like, oh, yeah, like a, a street urchin. Yeah. Because basically he says, yeah, we see in an earlier scene, he, he gets in a fight with his mother mm. and says he's running away and she drives off and leaves him. Yeah. And seemingly never comes back. <laughs> Little fuck. Yeah, because that's it. He's just part of it. And he's also been taken in by Patty. And he kind of sees Patty as like a grandmother figure, almost like a... All these runaways taking yeah, these runaways in that like kind. Fagin. Yeah, 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 yeah. To a degree, black cloak hunched over. Yeah. That fits. Yeah. Another runaway, cowboy. Oh yeah. He's a little bit older, and you know, a Bond is obviously scared by uh, Patty's appearance. Nick and cowboy. Are sure, look, she's cool. She yeah. doesn't stay here. We look after her and stuff like that. So it's uh, clever. Yeah. And cowboy even explains like she puts the cloak on. She wants to appear as a witch, and uh, that is a curse here, which stops people coming. Yeah. And that's why I'm like, yeah, no. 
that'll fly until like the government or local men, yeah. local like government will want to do something about it. Yeah. And we'll they're gonna, here. yeah. Oh no, we can't go in there and tear that house down and make it into a proper park a because it's a curse. Yes. Meanwhile, while selling flowers on the street, Nick meets Taft, who's a local writer and historian who befriends him. And in conversation, Taft explains the dark history of the local park, yeah. which relates back to the very start of the film. And there's been many, many deaths, deaths over the years. Mm. Taft is just there, is only in this film to fill in the, fill, do this part. Try and fill in the gaps. Yeah. yeah, and there are far too many gaps. Yeah. Late at night, Nick witnesses Patty entering the park in a mask and follows her. He watches from a distance as she, as she basically strangles and kills a, a woman. Mm -hmm. And that's where she turns young. She takes off a mask, she's youthful again. Mm -hmm. And Nick sees this and flees back to notify Bonnie and Cowboy. But they're not actually at the house. Bondi and Cowboy have become quite close. Bondi yeah. takes the cowboy really fucking quickly. Yeah. Really quickly. She's, yeah, first first day, isn't it? She's kind of like straight in. Straight in. She's almost forgotten about the traumatic experience in the van. She's yeah, that, like, that has gone so fucking quick. Yeah. Sweet. All right, I'm here now. Yeah. But Bondi has been drugged by Patty and she finds herself in a cave alongside Cowboy. That's where they are. She is confronted by her father who attempts to force her to strip nude to begin the ritual. But Patty intervenes and stops him. Now, I'm going to stop here. What? Does that sound as confusing as it does? Because yeah. it fucking is. I don't know how we get to this. I don't know how we get to um, this. I don't know how we get to the cave. I don't know how we get to her yeah. father being there. Um, Garby, I don't get how we get Tra being there. No. Tra, right, fair enough. She drugs her and brings her here. And let's say she contacts uh, Mark. Yeah. Gra. Um, to come and do the ritual and that kind of thing. Mm. But why do they seem at odds? Why does Patty then stop him completing the ritual? Oh. But she brought her here. I know. Well, oh, it's just too... It makes no sense. A fire ends up breaking out in the cave. Oh, that scene. Mm. Where it's like, they might as well have put a cardboard flame at the oh, end yeah. of the edge of yeah. the screen. Ooh, so hot. Yeah, and they like... Because even in like the fire, the CGI fire, the effects fire, is so far away from them, they did the like, ugh, ugh, fire. It looks so silly. It really, really does. Patty urges Bondi to swallow the amulet, which she does, which means Bondi becomes possessed by Petronelia, and through a slow fade kind of crap mm. graphics thing, she becomes all withered to look like her. And she reanimates the corpse of Patty and Mark's victims, which are all in there as well, yeah. and they kill and consume Mark and Patty. I don't get it. I just um. don't get it. I don't get it, right? I don't get why uh, pra Petronelia mm. does this. No. If they're gonna like she you gave them the opportunity to break the curse. Yeah. Why yeah. are you now stopping them from yeah. doing that? Why is Patty suddenly good? If you're gonna do the whole, you know what, she got to know Bondi mm -hmm. and thought, you know what, man, we've lived long enough. Yeah, let's let the future generation And like let her live her life and stuff like that. Do that then. We didn't do any of that. You might have got the depth to do anything like that, is it? Also, like Mark's obsession with Patty. Not Patty, sorry. Um, Bondi. Bondi, Bondi. Mm. Why is he... I thought that was a whole thing where he was going to have an issue mm. with sacrificing his daughter yeah. or conceiving a child and sacrificing her later. And Patty would be the one mm. to kind of force it. Yet he's like, oh, I love my daughter, I love my daughter so much that I'm fuck my marriage. And then, like, nope, cool, time to kill her. Oh, I don't, yeah. It's very, very confusing. Anyway, Pat... Petronelia's body, uh, spirit leaves Bondi's body, and uh, Bondi and Cowboy flee and find Nick in one of the tunnels. The caves crumbles, but thankfully Taft had followed Nick mm -hmm. and comes and rescues them by pulling a few rocks down. It's hardly difficult. The three then spend the night at Taft's home, and the next day return to visit Patty's home, uh, but they're notified then by a city official that it's to be demolished and yeah. they're not allowed in. Coincidence timing. Upon where to go, you think at this point, end film. Fucking it. Yeah, Why are we carrying on? Before. Why are yeah. we carrying on? They uh, they play in a playground and as Nick climbs a slide and asks Bondi to push him down, we see Bondi, her fingers begin to dig into his abdomen yeah. and she looks directly at the camera and smiles. And you're like, what? <laughs> what? Like, I don't get that either. No. Like, what, what does that mean? Why would she be like then? Like, I know she's like her father, but she is a curse. No. There's nothing about a no. curse. It's not like... I don't get it. No. no I don't get this film, to be honest. It was still just... There wasn't enough... There's not enough charm to kind of make you look nonsense. It is... It is... It is very, very... Tough watch. It's a tough watch because it's not a film that's aged well. I like the fact that 
for nasty, it's got a ton of imagination on what it wants to do. Mm, curses, fuck, yeah, yeah, like curses, supernatural, mixed with gore and violence. The old, and then, um, like medieval, not medieval, uh, prehistoric times. Yep. Oh, yeah, doesn't have the budget, doesn't have the quality no. of director, doesn't have a good writing team no. for it, doesn't have a good cast for it. The acting is shoddy all the way through. It's cringe stuff a lot of the time. Yeah. The dialogue, the weird behaviour, it's, no. it's, 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 it's a difficult watch pretty yeah. much all the way through. And the fact we're struggling and we only watched this, what, a time recording about four or five days ago? Yeah, about a week. A week ago and we're still like, what did we watch? There's a lot. Yeah, because even like you start trying to do some reading up about the internet to try and fill in the blanks, you only come to the same thing. It's all hy- hyperbole. You're trying to mm. find parts that didn't actually exist to tie this. I think the ending is the most confusing aspect overall. Yeah. The whole curse is odd in itself. You know, it's one of those unnecessarily complicated curses. Yeah. You know, you will have hair grown out your face on a Tuesday. Yeah, but and to get rid of it on a Wednesday, you must. Um, sacrifice a virgin but she can only be 15 years old and three months and two days exactly and only if the full moon is like no, yeah, just so complex, so complex. Yeah. but also it's one of those stupid things where it's like I'm going to curse you but I'm going to give you a golden and easy opportunity yeah. to get out of yeah, this yeah, it's yeah. like okay alright okay fine okay. and I'm fine with all of that kind of thing but like the, the concept of like one becomes good yet they both die at the end like again like I don't get that oh man and it, you could forgive all of that if the rest of it was interesting if there was lashings of gore or super uncomfortable yeah. nasty behavior it just isn't i think this is a fairly tame one yeah. even the idea like there's no actual incestuous it's implied yeah. more than anything else so there's no incest in it the same with the pedophilia aspect other than the attempted gang rape in the back which gets a little bit handsy and some boobs mm. and stuff like that there's nothing... It still feels very tame, yeah. you know? Yeah, because we compared to what we've seen before. And I think the incestuous part, I saw that more of his obsessed with his daughter because he knows she's serving a purpose for him long yeah, term. Absolutely. So I don't think it's incestuous. Like, I think as, a, as you're watching it, if you don't know the story, you go, it's a bit weird, mate. Like, he's up on your daughter there. But if he's trying to kind of keep her to a certain age, he would be eyes all the time to make sure she's still a virgin by the time he wants to sacrifice her. Absolutely. That's completely, completely fine. But to get to these points, you have to draw, I mean, earlier, earlier, for, there's certain points where we slow down. Like we slow down when she's like a, about five or six and we get a mind numbing trip to the zoo. Oh God. Mind numbing yeah. stuff. Um, so the best character or actor and actor in it is the character of Nick, the street mm-hmm. urchin style yeah. thing. He's got a cheekiness about him. I find it quite funny that his mother was just like, you're annoying me. Get out of the car. I'm yeah. running away. I'm not coming back. And literally never came yeah, back. Bye. I thought it was hilarious. It's so silly. Cowboy, you never really get enough depth. He just says he has issues with his stepfather, yeah. his father. And I sometimes think that's enough. That's mm-hmm. enough to make you go, okay. Yeah. I, I, I get it. Yeah. I get it. That kind of thing. But um, the trio together, like the character of Bondi, I mean, the names as well, oh, like how are you supposed to just... Bondi. Bondi. Like Bonnie. Oh, yeah, it that? just... It's, it's just silly. Like you're trying to throw a word Bonnie, that Bond yeah. in there? Oh, no. no. Exactly that. So exactly that. Um, as a nasty goes, it's, it's, it's got to be considered one of the worst because it's nonsense from beginning yeah. to end and it's not got enough elsewhere at all to make you go, yeah, this is at least worth watching for this. If you want to watch something that openly is just very absurd, then yeah, fair enough. Maybe mm. you get some entertainment value out of it. I don't think there's any comparison to things that are completely off, off the rails weird, but that, fun with it, mm, than what we've watched. Of if the you'd nasties. Like, if you like, if you, if people want to be interested in, then yeah, the um, I don't really think nonsensey. But that, that witch one was shit, the witch. Who came from the sea. Yeah, that was dull and overblown as well that was more psychological though yeah. than anything else there's not there tend to be like there's like set factions isn't there there's I mean there is stuff that... there is stuff based around the supernatural but mm. the problem is is this one is it, it 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 has all these there's no all these scenes and all these ideas but fuck all to connect them together yeah it feels like it feels like chunks of the movie are missing yes yes like chunks are just missing and like we, we had to cut that because it was too long and uh, you'll have to you'll work it out yourself. Yeah. It's like don't want to work no. it out myself. Don't go near the park. I don't think I'm not sure if it's the last don't go that we've got to cover, but we're almost we're almost done Through with them. Ones, we yeah. almost are. Uh, of the don't goes, it's certainly one of the worst. Overall, one of the worst nasties so far. I wouldn't say the worst. There are no, a couple of others. One. I think sometimes the nonsense was funny, like just fun to laugh at. Yeah, yeah. The ones where it's just dull. Yeah, dull is dull is worse. This movie yeah. is dull. 
but that nonsensical story at least I guess is funny yeah. at times you got any thoughts let us know in the comments thank you very much for watching you can check us out on gbhbell.com as well as on Facebook Instagram Twitter and Tumblr Go to Patreon to help us out over there, that's patreon.com forward slash GBHBL, as well as Big Cartel, where you can find some of our merchandise. We have a podcast running on SoundCloud and Apple Podcasts, and of course, if you like this video, do us a favour, hit the subscribe button and help the channel grow. Games, horror and heavy metal, what else is life for?